The moving image as entertainment is a pretty recent phenomenon when you think about it. It really came of age as a result of film and cinema. I mean, that's where the name movies come from, images that move. So in this lecture series, we'll look at some of the innovators of motion and graphics up until the early 1950s. Some of these experimental pioneers have exerted a tremendous influence on generations of filmmakers, animators and graphic designers, and the techniques that they used are still applied today. I hope you enjoy seeing some of these really foundational works of motion graphic art, and that you seek out a little bit more information on some of the names that are mentioned in this lecture. We'll provide some links and uh, you know, resources for you be able to be able to do that. Artists and designers have long sought to achieve a sense of motion in their art. Have a look at some of these images from the Chauvet Caves in France that were painted over 30,000 years ago. Look at how the artists have used multiple techniques to imply motion. Multiple images of the same animal convey and blurred lines around figures create a sense of movement. Similar techniques are seen in the Lasso Caves, which were painted about 15,000 years ago. And right here in Australia, in the Kimberleys and the Bradshaw Caves, we can see similar kind of ideas of multiple characters used to portray movement. And these images were painted somewhere between 17,000 and 25,000 years ago. Imagine viewing these paintings under a flickering firelight and watching these characters dance and move. This early optical illusion in which moving light gives motion to a static image is an example of persistence of vision. Persistence of vision is a fundamental principle of animation and it refers to our eye's ability to retain an image for a fraction of a second after it disappears so that our brain can be tricked into seeing a rapid succession of different still images as a continuous picture. The brief period during which each image persists on the retina hence persistence of vision, allows it to blend smoothly with the subsequent image. From the 1600s, optical devices such as the magic lantern, the thaumatrope from the 1820s, the phenakistoscope from 1832, the zoetrope, 1833, and the praxinoscope from the 1870s created the illusion of motion. But it was not until the development of the film strip that dynamic media became a revolutionary art form and a mass entertainment. Film strips would move through a camera, capturing the action in front of the camera at up to 25 image frames per second. Once processed, the films were then projected to stunned audiences. It was the French Lumiere brothers who really saw the opportunity of film as mass entertainment. The, the brothers, they started simply enough, just filming day-to-day -day events, screening you know, this film that was made in 1895 of a train arriving at a station. When that happened in a cinema space, members of the audience purportedly fled the theatre in terror that they'd be run over by the train. And almost immediately, the brothers and other artists saw the potential to manipulate and expand on this new medium. So let's take a look at Georges Méliès' uh, Trip to the Moon from 1902. Méliès, who started his career as a, as a magician, has become an enigmatic icon of cinema. Martin Scorsese uh, paid tribute to Méliès in the 2011 film Hugo based around his work. Méliès pioneered a range of techniques such as stop motion animation, superimposition through double exposure of images, and dissolves and fades. He turned the moving image of cinema into an extraordinary display of magic for a mass audience. Méliès, for me, is the embodiment of both definitions of dynamic that I outlined in the first lecture series. Méliès constantly evolved the form of film and was filled with energy and new ideas and a will to innovate and experiment. At the turn of the 20th century, we can see a rapid process of evolution of film internationally. It's a fascinating time in the history of the moving image generally, but in keeping with our focus on motion graphics, we'll look at a few key creative developments in this area up until the 1920s. In 1906, the company Vitagraph released an animated short film called Humorous Phases of Funny Faces. The animator, Stuart Blackton, draws characters with chalk on a blackboard. The faces then become animated through single frame exposures with slight variations between each frame. At the end of the film, Blackton's hand reappears to erase the figures. At the time, this technique mystified and enchanted audiences and triggered new experiments by other aspiring filmmakers and animators. Around 1908, Emil Cole began experimenting by incorporating live action footage with hand-drawn animated elements, as, as seen here in 1909's Claire de Lune Espagnole. In 1910, Earl Hurd invented the process of cell animation. Cell animation involved the use of translucent sheets of celluloid, 
often overlaid on top of a fixed background, a fixed background that was painted or drawn. One of the earliest surviving examples of cell animation is Gertie the Dinosaur from 1914. There's also an early Australian connection to the cell animation uh, scene, which is Felix the Cat from 1919. The Australian cartoonist and animator, Pat Sullivan, translated his newspaper comic character of Felix the Cat into the very first animated character with an identifiable screen personality, predating Mickey Mouse by a couple of years. Another innovator, Max Fleischer, invented rotoscoping in 1917. This involves tracing over previously filmed live action elements that allows animators to produce smooth, lifelike movements. And we're watching here an excerpt of Fleischer's character Coco the Clown in full flight taking on a fly in the film The Tantalising Fly from 1919. Fleischer was an inveterate kind of uh, inventor and he later uh, went on to make the rotograph which enabled animated characters to be placed into live and realistic settings. So a live action background was projected one frame at a time onto a piece of glass. A cell of the animated character was placed on the front side of the glass and the composite scene is then filmed. And with this technique, Fleischer went on to develop legendary characters including Betty Boop, Popeye and Superman. The pioneering artists and inventors highlighted in this lecture created a basis for how images and graphic elements could move on screen. And a lot of these techniques are the basis for all animation, stop frame animation, superimposition, double exposure, cell animation, rotoscoping, and rotographing. I hope this has been a useful introduction to the evolution of some techniques that are still in use, even today, but also to some of the innovators who are behind these techniques.